Hey guys, and welcome to this arena playstyle guide for Elemental Shaman. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick update on Azerite traits and changes to the default talent setup, as well as covering some of the best compositions you should be running. Finally, we're going to go over your general playstyle and goals in arena as an Elemental Shaman. There haven't been many changes to the default talent setup and Azerite traits listed in our Get Started guide, so for a full rundown on talents and traits, be sure to check that out. For a quick refresher, your talent should look like this mainly, with the most notable change being to always take Earth Shield, regardless of what you are facing. Then for the final PvP talent, Slot, swap between Grounding Totem, Sky Fury, Lightning Lasso, and Swelling Waves depending on the situation. Also you can swap Ice Fury for Primal Elementalist when you need the added utility from your elementals. For Azerite traits, you still want to be primarily running free Lava Shock traits for their insane amount of burst damage. Alternatively, replacing one for Igneous Potential for a little extra consistent damage and Maelstrom generation. But for more information on this section, please be sure to check out our Get Started guide. Currently, Elemental is very niche and doesn't have a whole lot of composition options. Here I'm going to give you the top 3 compositions top Elemental Shamans are having success with on the ladder. First up is Elemental, Balanced Druid, paired with either a Resto Druid or Restoration Shaman. This composition plays around dealing the maximum DPS possible, while looking to oom the enemy healer, setting up kills with Earthshocks and Star Surges. Look to mainly play defensive when playing this composition, as the longer you go into dampening, the more you benefit. To get to that point though, you need to utilise all your defensive capabilities as an Elemental Shaman. Second is Elemental, Frost Mage, best paired with a Discipline Priest or Restoration Druid, for the added damage and crowd control they bring. This composition looks to survive and kite, abusing the mobility of both Elemental and Frost Mage, kiting with Ghost Wolf and Blink, while utilising the slows from the Mage, setting up kill windows with Earthshocks, Frozen Orbs and Polymorphs onto the enemy healer. Lastly is Assassination, Elemental, Resto Druid. This composition looks to play around Kidney Shot, combining all Burst whilst the target is locked down then looking to use Earthshocks after the Kidney Shot to further lock down and burst their target, while the Druid looks to crowd control off targets. Elemental is quite unique and is mostly considered a support class, bringing a high amount of utility, low consistent damage, but strong burst. In this section, we're going to be covering the general playstyle and goals in Arena. Elemental has four main strengths. These are Mobility, Disruption, Utility, and finally, it's Burst Damage. Mastering all four of these strengths can make you a force to be reckoned with in Arena. First up, let's talk about mobility. Elementals and Shamans in general are strong because of their ability to kite melee in Arena. This is primarily due to their ability Ghost Wolf. Whilst in Ghost Wolf, you gain 30% movement speed and are unable to be slowed. This can also be paired with the talent Spirit Wolf and Spectral Recovery when facing double melee to increase its effect effectiveness. However, should only be taken versus certain double melee matchups or games where you're being Ghost Wolf kiting for the majority of the game. This means that if a target is slowed, they simply will not be able to connect to you. Utilising this is a great tool to make sure you are never under pressure by melee. Combining your Ghost Wolf with either Frost Shock or Earthbind Totem to make it incredibly difficult for melee to connect to you. Take a look at this clip here where we can see Jamie using both his Frost Shock and his Earthbind Totem in combination with Ghost Wolf to make the enemy warrior and enhancement look helpless, simply having to give up and swap targets. When kiting, look to kite melee into the open and build distance. Once you have distance, you can begin to freely cast. If targets ever reach you, you still have Thunderstorm at your disposal. You can use it to knock the targets away so you can once again build distance and continue to kite. Also bear in mind Thunderstorm can be used while stunned, and with melee most of the time only being able to connect to you in stuns, it's a great tool to save for when you are stunned to use it to survive. Disruption is another key part of Elemental's toolkit, having a huge amount of ways to stop casts at their disposal. Elementals have Thunderstorm, Wind Shear, Grounding, Hex, and Earthshock in conjunction with Earth Fury talent. Wind Shear is Shaman's main interrupt, being on a relatively short cooldown of 12 seconds and lasting now for 3 seconds on a 30 yard range. Look to use this on important damage abilities or shutting down crowd control targeted onto your healer. 
Take here for example, Jamie is facing Rogue Mage Priest. The mage is looking for a polymorph onto Jamie's healer. He stops this in its tracks by simply wind shearing him on cast. Grounding is a totem that will redirect all spells cast to it for 3 seconds, or until it is killed. This can be used to either absorb some incoming damage or to stop the enemy team getting crowd control. Jamie here has no wind shear, and the enemy druid is casting cyclone as well as the enemy mage is casting polymorph. He drops his grounded totem halfway through the cast so that both abilities are redirected, meaning him and his team can continue playing without the enemy's crowd control disrupting them. Hex is predominantly a crowd control that you can utilise when facing teams without a curse dispel. However, it can be used as a tool to disrupt enemy casts. Say that you have no grounding and no wind shear. You can hex the target to stop their next cast and be disruptive. Here, Jamie is facing a team with a hex dispel. He decides to hex the enemy Mistweaver out of the fear, despite the Shaman being able to decurse it. He then knocks the Shaman away so that he can't instantly decurse, wasting precious time the enemy Mistweaver could have spent otherwise healing. Earthshock is predominantly a damage spell, however, the disruption it provides when paired with the PvP talent Earth Fury should not be overlooked. Here we can see it perfectly being demonstrated. The Shaman is casting a hex onto Jamie. He stops this with his Earthshock, setting up the rogue perfectly to begin his setup. Last up is Thunderstorm. This is a great tool when close to an enemy to disrupt them. Whether it be stopping a cast or simply to build distance, the disruption provided by this ability is great when used correctly. Elemental Shamans offer a lot of utility. If it isn't disruption, it's off hills and ways to get your team out of crowd control. In this section, we're going to cover how to use the utility at your disposal correctly. Elementals have four main forms of utility. These are Healing Surge, Tremor Totem, Earth Shield, and Grounding Totem. As we've already covered Grounding in the previous section, we limit this to Tremor, Healing Surge, and Earth Shield. Tremor Totem is an ability added back in the game in Battle for Azeroth. How it works is that it will remove anybody in any form of fear. This includes Psychic Scream, Intimidating Shout, and Warlock's Fear, as well as Mind Control from Priest. As demonstrated here, Jamie's priest gets feared by the warrior's intimidating shout. He moves close and drops down Tremor Totem, breaking his, his priest out. With the consistent damage outside of your burst windows with Earthshock being quite low, Elemental focuses heavily on utility. A huge part of this is their ability to provide their team with strong, casted offhills in the form of Healing Surge. Healing Surge should almost be part of your rotation. Look to help your healer out whenever needed. Here we can see Jamie's Priest in a full trap. He knocks the DPS away and instead of doing damage he prioritises to top himself with healing surges, as currently him and his team are in between setups, so he needs to make sure he helps his healer out and preserve his mana by topping himself with his own healing surge. In this example, it's Jamie's team who is dropping under pressure. With his rogue dropping low, Jamie opts to help his priest recover by healing his rogue with healing surge twice before continuing to then do damage. Earth Shield should be kept up on whoever the enemy team is focusing. It does a little healing every time the target takes damage, and it's worth applying every time it expires. As the healing over a course of a game really adds up, helping your healer to preserve mana and keep either you or your team healthy. Elemental's consistent damage is quite weak, and all revolves around one thing, and that's to build up your Maelstrom. Your general rotation is to simply keep up flame shocks and as many targets as possible off cooldown, then to use lava burst procs as you get them. Elemental's damage basically consists of one button, and that is earth shock. All your other spells are simply a tool to build up your maelstrom so that you can use this button. This means you should be setting up your earth shocks correctly, looking to have 20 stacks of lava shock and as many procs or unused damage modifiers as you have. You want to be making sure you make the most out of your earth shocks and make them count. Don't do them into damage reductions or shields and always make sure to maximize the damage. Setting up these with burst windows and combining them with your team can easily secure kills on unsuspecting enemies. Combining this insane damage with the talent aftershock and elemental attunement means you can do some insane back-to-back -back earth shocks 
completely destroying your enemies if luck is on your side. Okay guys, that just about wraps up this elemental playstyle guide. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill and leave any comments or questions you still may have below.